Ashfield and the woods near Silent Hill, the bodies of five apparent murder victims and a sixth severely wounded female were discovered. The woman was immediately rushed to St. Jerome's Hospital, but died a short time later of her injuries. She has been identified...
What's going on here? changes before the party. My dream, and you don't even know my name. It's Cynthia. Your dream. That's right. <laughs> this is just a dream. And a really terrible one, too. I hope I wake up soon. So you think this is a dream, huh? Well, if it's not a dream, what is it? Anyway. I want to get out of here, but I can't find the exit. Say, will you help me find it? I'm kind of scared all alone. I'll do a 
special favor for you later. <laughs> it's just a dream, so I might as well have some fun. Wait a minute. I think I'm gonna puke.
that damp room. Oh, there it is.
Cynthia. Man, what's that noise out there? Let me out of here! There's something going on in this room. What do you mean? I heard weird noises coming from inside there. Help! Hey, Richard, can you see anything from your window? No. Everything looks pretty normal to me. The guy who lives here, what's he like anyway? I know his name and face, but... That's about it. Well, I'm gonna go call the super. Yeah, good idea. Damn it, they can't hear me. Although the cult itself is gone, I'm sure the spirit of it is still alive. There are too many strange things happening in that town. I'm investigating two people, or maybe I should just say one. I've just about discovered what's going on. Through the ritual of the Holy Assumption, he built a world. It exists in a space separate from the world of our Lord. More accurately, it is within yet without the Lord's world. Unlike the world of our Lord, it is a world in extreme flux. Unexpected doors or walls, moving floors, odd creatures, a world only he can control. Anyone swallowed up by that world will live there for eternity. Undying, they will haunt that realm as a spirit. How can our Lord forgive such an abomination?
so you, you came to investigate this, this stone t too. There, there was a, another g guy here before, a, a, a real nosy guy. B b but I, I was the one, one who found the stone first. In the o old days, the, the n n natives called it na Nakihona. They used it in a, a, a ceremony for, for talking with their dead ancestors. And now those, those guys are, are using it too. Call, call it the mother stone. They're just uh, up up ahead in the, that weird building, op operating some kind of crazy re religious cult. They they used to c c collect orphans and 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 d d d did things to them. Kind of gives you the chill chills, huh? this stone. Revelation, something's gonna happen. That nosy guy that was here, he said it too. Something big is gonna happen. Finally, it's gonna happen! <laughs> was awesome.
I finally met him, the one the nosy guy talked about, the devil! Special news report. In a forest near Silent Hill, the burned corpse of a 30-year-old male was discovered earlier today. The police have ruled it a homicide and are investigating. The numbers 17121 were reportedly carved into the man's body. Due to the marks on the victim, the police are investigating possible links to the Walter Sullivan case 10 years ago. This is the superintendent. Are you in there, Henry? Help me! There's something wrong with this room! Help! Let me out of here! Is anybody home? <sighs> What's going on here? I heard something in there. Yeah. That sound. It's the same one as back then. Wish House, an orphanage on the outskirts of Silent Hill, but behind its false image is a place where children are kidnapped and brainwashed. Wish House is managed by the Silent Hill Smile Support Society, a charity organization sometimes called 4S. It's true that 4S is a well-respected charity that takes in poor children without homes and raises them with hope, but at its heart, it's a heathen organization that teaches its own warped dogma in lieu of good religious values. Mr. Smith, who lives near Wish House, had this to say. Sometimes, at night, I can hear their weird prayers and sounds of children crying. I went there to complain one time, but they ran me right out. Since then, it hasn't changed a bit. In fact, this reporter was refused admission when he attempted to take photographs in the facility. What exactly do the folks at Wish House have to hide? During my investigations, I was able to discover, however, a suspicious looking round concrete tower, which appears to be part of their facilities. Unfortunately, no one was willing to tell us what the tower was used for, but it seems unlikely that it has anything to do with the business of raising orphans. It may, in fact, be a prison.
or secret place of worship. The cult religion that operates Wish House is known by the locals simply as the Order. It's a religion that is deeply interwoven with Silent Hill's history, but its worshippers' fervent belief that they are among the elite chosen people has a dark and dangerous side. I intend to continue my investigations of Wish House and the cult behind it. I've always believed that telling the whole truth and showing the children the true path is our most important duty. Really? That many people? You sure you can handle it? Oh, really? Huh? Oh, no problem. But I better start getting ready soon. I told you, no problem. I'll be there. What? Oh, that. Yeah, you're telling me. I really want to find another place soon. There's just, I don't know, something about this place. Kill me! He, he's gonna kill me! He's, he's gonna kill me! Walter's gonna kill me!
can't be staying there. God, jeez. Come on, let me out of here. So I didn't need to die in here. They can stay in there, stay in there more. Walter, I'm telling you, stay down. Let's walk away. Who is that boy? And who are you? His name's Walter. Walter Sullivan. I used to work at the orphanage watching the kids. I'm Andrew DeSalvo. They tried to make it seem like an orphanage, but according to that town's holy scriptures, it was actually the center of their religion. And that kid, Walter, he was really into that mumbo jumbo. Especially that descent of the Holy Mother business. Oh, it's scary. Oh, God. Oh. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. How's 
it going with room 302? Well, I uh, just tried to open it up. But it looks like something's uh, blocking it from the inside. Huh. Anyway, it's not the first time. You mean the guy who lived here before? And it wasn't just him either. There's uh, something wrong with his whole apartment. Forget I said anything. But still, those noises. Lately, I've been feeling like my life is in serious danger. I've been through a lot in my life, but I've never felt this kind of pure animal fear. In case something happens to me, I've decided to write down what I've learned for whoever you are that's living in the apartment now. I've been investigating the mass murder that took place seven years ago in which ten people were killed in ten days. They were killed in a variety of ways. But the one thing they all had in common was that each corpse had the following numbers in order of their deaths carved into them. 01121 Zero two one two one zero three one two one zero four one two one zero five one two one zero six one two one zero seven one two one zero eight one two one zero nine one two one ten one two one. The name of the killer, it was carved in as well. His name was Walter Sullivan.
talking about you live in that apartment too huh say you look a lot like a little punk that I once caught sneaking around there do you know something about what's going on hey hey you stop Like another one, Captain. Got one, one, two, one on his head. It's just like that case from ten years ago. Yeah, that Walter Sullivan case. But Sullivan's dead. They even got the body. Must be some crazy copycat. Yeah, but even so. I'm going to summarize everything that I've learned about Walter Sullivan so far. 
He was born right here in room 302 of South Ashfield Heights. His parents abandoned him soon afterwards and disappeared somewhere, leaving the baby alone. He was discovered and sent to St. Jerome's Hospital. He was adopted by Wish House, an orphanage in the forest near Silent Hill that's run by the secret Silent Hill religious cult. When he was six years old, someone from the cult showed him where he was born. Since then, he started to believe that room 302 itself, in other words, this room, was his mother. Every week he traveled from the orphanage to South Ashfield Heights, a pretty long trip for a kid his age. Sometimes he took the subway, and sometimes he took the bus. I'm tired. My headache is already killing me. I'll write more tomorrow. Continuing from yesterday, I'm going to summarize everything that I've learned about Walter Sullivan so far. Naturally, it was a long way for a kid his age to travel, but he made the trip every week by subway or bus. Unfortunately, someone else was living in this apartment, and so he couldn't be reunited with his mother. Room 302. For years, he continued to come here, almost like he was possessed, just to peek into the apartment. Eventually, the tenants began to complain and treat him badly when they saw him hanging around. Walter began to fear the tenants and see them as obstacles preventing him from seeing his mother. As the years passed and Walter matured, he began to be more and more influenced by the teachings of the cult. Furthermore, his obsession with his mother and his feelings of resentment towards the outer world became even deeper. Walter became preoccupied with one particular tract from the cult's Bible, the Descent of the Holy Mother, the Twenty-One Sacraments. By the Twenty-One Sacraments, the Holy Mother shall appear in the countries of the world and shall bring salvation to the sinful ones. After Walter left Wish House, he moved to Pleasant River, a neighboring town of Silent Hill. For a while, he lived the life of a normal student but was still filled with bitterness and resentment towards the rest of the world. Several years later, he launched his plan there. The 21 Murders. Looks like my apartment. What the hell is this? This from Miss Galvin a long, long time ago. She was younger than me back then. She looked so happy holding her mother's hand. Here, I'll give it to you.
this. It's dangerous. You need to hurry. Get out of here. So they took the victim to St. Jerome's, huh? Yeah, she's not gonna make it. She had numbers in her back, too. Walter Sullivan copycat. Round three, huh? Well, they never got the scumbag behind round two a few years back. Maybe it's the same guy. Oh, what if one, two, and three? Oh, what if they're all the same guy? What the hell are you talking about? You know Sullivan killed himself. The weird thing is, there were no clues. Crime scenes were always spotless. No fingerprints, no fibers, nothing. Just the numbers, two, zero, one, two, one. I've been a cop for a long time, but I never seen a case like this one. It's almost like, like they were killed by a ghost or something. Walter Sullivan did kill himself. He died in his prison cell of blood loss after he stabbed himself in the neck with his spoon. His body was buried in a cemetery just outside his hometown of Silent Hill in an unmarked grave. After that, his name became famous all over the world and it looked like his string of mass murders was finally finished at 10 out of 21. But three years later, they found a corpse that had 12 out of 21 carved into it. The corpse was from six months earlier. In other words, the person was killed two and a half years after Sullivan committed suicide. The MO was exactly the same as Sullivan's, except for one thing. All ten of Sullivan's victims were found with their hearts cut out and their chest wounds sewn together expertly with thread. On the other hand, the 12 out of 21 victims still had their hearts. Naturally, the police think it's a copycat and are proceeding on that basis. But they haven't made any progress and recently discovered victim number 13. This corpse also had their heart intact. The police still haven't even identified a suspect. I've got a working hypothesis. Very few people knew the details of the original crimes and would be able to copy Sullivan's MO so precisely. First, I'll head to Silent Hill to the graveyard near that beautiful little lake. Maybe I'll find the answer there. The weather that day was strange. Even though I avoided the earlier storm, there was still a thick fog clinging to everything. Fortunately, that allowed me to avoid being seen and get right to work. The police are still stubbornly acting as if it's just a copycat case, so I figured things probably hadn't been touched here, but I was wrong. I should have come sooner. The cemetery was in such bad condition that it was almost sad. 
the storm must have raised the sea level. Anyway, that's how it was when I found Walter Sullivan's grave. I'm still in shock. There was no body in the grave, and on top of that, written on the coffin, were the numbers 1121. 11 out of 21. My theory is that Walter never died at the prison. It may have been someone else who committed suicide. Either that, or the person the police arrested was not the real Walter Sullivan. I'm in no position to investigate what really happened at the prison. But in any case, Walter didn't die at the prison. The man with the coat that showed up here was the real Walter. Seven years ago, he did something in that apartment. I'm certain there's a link between that and the bizarre things that have been happening here. Just a little bit more and I'll have this whole thing figured out. I may even find that the real Walter is somewhere nearby. How long has it been since I've left this room? I can't tell if it's been days or hours. But during that time, I found the body of 14 out of 21. I've been having hallucinations lately. I think I'm losing my mind. Number one. 10 heart. Number 2, 10. Number 3, 10 hearts. Number 4, 10 hearts. Steve Garl. Number 5, 10. Number 6, 10 heart. Number 7, 10 hearts. Billy Locaine. Number 8, 10 hearts. Miriam Locaine. Number 9, 10 hearts. Number 10, 10. Number 11, Assumption, Walter Sullivan. Number 12, Void. Number 13, Darkness. Number 14, Gloom. Number 15, Despair. Joseph Scriber. Number 16, Temptation, Cynthia Velasquez. Number 17, Source, Jasper Geen. Number 18, Watchfulness, Andrew DeSalvo. Number 19, Chaos, Richard Braintree. Number 20, Mother, Eileen Galvin. Number 21, Wisdom, Henry Townsend.
Believe that? But it's true. And there was a kid with you.
in that world as well. That horrible nightmare. But if you get sucked into it, it's not just a nightmare. Don't get lost in there. If you get pulled in, you'll be killed. But there's still hope. Maybe this small key will guide you. If you've seen the door with the placard set in it, look on the other side of the door. Then keep going down, down into the deepest part of you, and look for the ultimate truth. Have you been here the whole time? Yeah, and I didn't see any hole either. You just disappeared all of a sudden. I can't stay here by myself. I'll be cursed. You know it. What am I gonna do? I might know a way to save you. Do you know about someone named Joseph? Investigation about a religious cult and a man named Walter Sullivan. I got this letter from him. He told me to go down, down into the deepest part of him, and to look for the ultimate truth. Let's do that. There must be something down there.
here goes. October 6th. Tomorrow is book study in the chapel. If I can't read well, I'll wind up like John. I'm really scared. October 5th. I got hit again. I didn't do anything wrong. I wish he was dead. Here goes. October 4th. My cheek hurts. I hate him. Here goes. October 14th. I did a good job reading today. I was so happy. But the 21 sacraments for the descent of the Holy Mother was hard. Here goes. October 16th. Some important people came today. One of them, da, it's cut off. I can't read anymore. October 17th. The important lady told me my mother was asleep in Ashfield. I have a mother too. I'm so happy. I want to see my mother. Where is Ashfield anyway? I, I studied archaeology back in college, but I... Here goes. October 13th. I finally got outside. John is still stuck in that round cell. I hope I read well tomorrow. I'm pretty sure that somewhere in these woods is an orphanage called a Wish House. Here goes. March 17th. I went to Ashfield again. It was my fourth time. Just like last time, my mother... something... The city is scary and the apartment where my mother is has... Um... I can't read any more than that. Here goes. October 18th. I have to stay in the round cell even if I read well tomorrow. If I do it, God will be happy, so I will do it. He comes into the round cell a lot to visit, but it's okay, I guess. Here goes. October 21st. Sunday is the day I leave the round cell to read the book. I read very well today. If I can do a good job reading the 21 sacraments for the descent of the Holy Mother, I can meet my mother. The important lady told me that, but tomorrow I'm going to the round cell again. Are you Walter Sullivan? That's what everybody calls me, but I don't really have a name. Oh, neither. Well, what about a mom or dad? Yeah, but I never met them. They left South Ashfield Heights right after I was born. But soon I'll get to see my mom. Do you know where she is now? Yeah, of course. Right where I was born. Lots of people tried to stop me, but it's fine now. 
It says in the scriptures that I'll be with her. I gotta hurry. Mom's waiting.
Crimson Tome. She who is called the Holy Mother, be not holy one whit. The descent of the Holy Mother is not but the descent of the devil. Those that be called the Twenty-One Sacraments, be not sacramental one whit. The Twenty-One Sacraments, be not but the Twenty-One Heresies, to give birth to a realm of wickedness within the blessed realm of our Lord. Be blasphemy and the work of the devil. If thou would stop the descent of the devil, you must bury part of the conjurer's mother's flesh within the conjurer's true body. Thou must also pierce the conjurer's flesh with the eight spears of void, darkness, gloom, despair, temptation, source, watchfulness, and chaos. Do so and the conjurer's unholy flesh will become that which it once was, by the grace of our Lord.
No way. Not here, too. He 
really thinks that room 302 is his mother. I've gotta... <laughs> I've gotta help him.
just a little longer now. Henry, you're it. The last of the 21 seconds. The final sign. The receiver of wisdom.
Guess we'll have to find a new place to live, huh? <laughs> Just like children like to do, they'll.